Folks, good afternoon. You are halfway through the working week. If you would like to support me and the channel and what I do, please head to the Patreon down below. It is a huge help to me. I cannot tell you how much of a shot on the armor it is to see that going up towards the £750 target a month. If I can do that, then I can stop relying on stupid old ad revenue that I don't, don't want to rely on anymore. Because it goes up and down, and it never seems to make up its mind on what it wants to do from one month to the other. So, I'd like to have uh, stable pocket money to use. So, you know, if you want to help me out, over there on Patreon is the way to do it. Or become a member of the channel too. That's also a way to do it. Um, also, please support Composite Games. They do a lot for the channel. And uh, they are providing more uh, prizes for the prize draw that we've got on the 22nd of July. Uh, I'll be drawing stuff out of, out of names out of the hat then. There are two chances to win £30 worth of free models from Composite Games. Anywhere in the world, too. I don't care where you are. I will ship them to you, even if I have to, even if I have to pay for it myself. I'll ship them to you, all right? So, thank you very much, and let's get on with the video, shall we? Oh, and by the way, the new uh, scroll for the patrons will be out on Monday. So, that's what we're going to be doing. So, Hobby Nightmare. When I say Patreon scroll, I mean like your name's on a, on a scroll board. You know what I mean. It'll be out on Monday. Uh, because there are a lot of you, and I want to get you all in. So, first Hobby Nightmare comes from Zach. Hello, Zach. How are you? And he says... I was browsing the Warhammer Isle once again, feeding the addiction, figuring out what my fix was going to be this time. So I've cut out a lot at the start here because it was just me and him talking rather than, you know, he was actually getting into what we're doing. So he says, he's, he's browsing essentially. Uh, more Black Templars, continue the awakening of the Necron forces, or maybe add to the Guard army that may never be built. Right, so, so he's, he, this is the, the problem of every hobbyist in a hobby store. Because th the thing is, the way to the way to decide what you get in a hobby store is you need to decide what you want to walk home with right, right there and then. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, what can you not live without? That's what I normally do. Even if there's something there that's cooler... If I can wait for it online, then I'll get it online. Do you know what I mean? It's about what I can walk away with that on that day. Anyway, as I was deciding, a man and a lady walked into the aisle. I couldn't tell what their relationship was, but he was explaining the 40k setting to her, and he seemed to be a big fan of Nurgle. I could hear the passion in his voice uh, as he went on about how the grandfather just wants everyone to be, his, be in his embrace, living pain-free forever in the garden. I smiled at him as I passed, walking out the aisle as I found his exuberance to be enjoyable. I made a quick stop at the paints to see if I needed another pot, perhaps. While I was browsing, I could hear him talking about uh, to one of the employees behind the counter about how much of the 40k lore is inspired by Lovecraft's work, basically intervening, uh, inventing the cosmic horror setting. Then, very loudly, he was talking to the employee, just blurted out, Lovecraft is a racist and a bit and a bigot. This is what the 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 guy says. The the um, employee says. I then looked over and could tell this killed the entire mood for the man who looked extremely de dejected this, from this comment. After that, the conversation was done and the two of them left. All right, so mini rant time. I didn't think I'd be ranting this early into the video. As a historian. Uh, those of you who know me know I teach history uh, as a living, essentially. Um, <laughs> as a historian, this grinds my gears to no end. <laughs> the, one, the one thing I really hate... I was watching this really interesting video last night on philosophers, and there was this guy, and he's ranking philosophers on a ranking list, which is a stupid way to do a video anyway, but, like, not, not the ranking list, but ranking philosophers just as, like, what? Um, it's all subjective, is it not? But again, most things are sub subjective, but there's no real proof. Like, I can tell you what the coolest Primarch is by who beats who in a fight. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you know, and, and, and this subjectivity is taken out of it a little bit because there's certain things that are just empirically measurable in what Primarchs are better than others, you know? The Lion is better than Korax, for example, you know? One of them is badass and the other one whinges and cries a lot um, and fails to create new space marines. But uh, nothing against Korak, just using it as an example. So, what I don't like is what what this guy was doing is he was he would get he would say some really interesting stuff about a philosopher, 
Like, really interesting stuff. And then he would say, yeah, but he was kind of racist and misogynist, so he's going to be in F tier. Like, what? This guy was living in the 1500s. Like, you can't just... It, it's so stupid and closed-minded. You know, I, I, I just don't get it. I don't get... You, you cannot, as a historian... And if you do this, stop it. You cannot judge people in the past by modern standards. You cannot do shit like that. Don't. Right? Lovecraft was a man of his time. I'm going to tell you now, most people thought that way back then. He was considered normal back then. Okay? That's just the way it was. We are very enlightened, but one thing that I really don't like is when we look down our noses at people in the past like they were so primitive and stupid, you know? Let me tell you now, if you're depressed, go and read Marcus Aurelius's Meditations, and if you still think that those people were backwards all the way back then, you're a moron. You're a moron. Because there's a, a, a huge swathe of those people from, from history who know a lot more about the world than we do. And we've lost it over time. Um, one one joke I really liked by Mike Judge, it, it was in a, in a movie he did back in the day, was that um, stupid people are procreating and, and smart people aren't. Because smart people are working and doing their, their careers and they're putting off having kids. And eventually they're not going to have kids. You know, they might just decide not to. And so we're going to have a generation of stupid, misinformed people who seem to think calling Lovecraft a racist and a bigot somehow makes them intelligent. It doesn't. Makes you look like a fucking idiot. Because he lived in, a, in an age where all that stuff was normal. It's okay to stand there and not agree with somebody, but still appreciate their work. If you don't have the intelligence to do that, then keep your mouth shut. Moving on. Zach says, I understand Lovecraft uh, had his faults, but when you search for garbage at the dump, you, all you'll find is garbage. That's a good way of putting it. I find far too often nowadays we like to judge the past with 21st century glasses on and completely dismiss all the good things these people have also accomplished. It's really weird that I got this message because I was literally thinking this last night. I've not read this before. I literally was thinking this last night. I was thinking of doing a video on it and now I don't have to. There you go. I also think that if we continue to judge the world with the notion that all sins are rocks and good deeds are feathers, then eventually we are all going to drown. Wow, that is such a fucking deep way of putting it. That's such a good way of putting it. If we continue to judge the world with the notion that all sins are rocks and good deeds are feathers, then we are eventually we're all going to drown. Cheers, North, and hopefully my pathetic contribution can buy you a beer. Maybe once I start working again, I'll be able to up it. But until then, keep fighting the good fight. Mate, every little counts, and you are clearly a very intelligent human being, so well done to you. Um... That was such a cool thing. I also want to get a tattoo of that. That's really cool. Or put it on like a bumper sticker or something. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, every little helps, dude. Like, like, like every single time I get a message saying, "Yo, so and so subscribed to the Patreon," I'm like, "Thank God for that." You know, like we're getting towards a 750 pound target. Like we we we've stalled quite a lot. We're nowhere near there, and we've stalled quite a lot. So I think this is what I'm getting for now, which is fine, which I'm really happy with. Um, but yeah, I definitely don't want to see it going down because then I'd be like, "Oh, that'd be a bummer." Uh, <laughs> But as long as I'm earning it, that's the main thing. If I'm not earning it, then fair enough, you know what I mean? Tell me what I can do to earn it. Um, so, Crocs says, and the name is spelled K-R-O-X-X-C. So, you know, Crocs, I guess. Crocs? Yeah, one sec. So, well, uh, need to cough. Crocs says, hey North, love your vids. I got a weird hobby nightmares for you. So I play Warhammer 40,000 in my local game store in Manchester. It's a very welcoming store, and the staff are amazing. Uh, they're no fault to them. The fault lies with the drill sergeant, an ex-friend of mine whom I won't name. We managed a get, we arranged a game of 2,000 points, Tyranids versus Imperial Guard. I love me my bugs. So I put a lot of time and effort into my list, and when I got it built, I quickly hurried down to the store to verse the to verse the drill sergeant, to go and play the drill sergeant. I ended up going first, and it was already looking bad after my psychic and shooting phase, I could hear him tutting and muttering to himself how I'm a dickhead for playing nids 
and the way I built my list. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, I, I tend to think you guys give these people more credit than, the, than they, they need. If someone did that to me, I don't give a shit if you think I'm salty. I'm packing up. Do you know what I mean? Oh, he's such a dickhead for playing them like that. What the fuck, man? Fucking idiot. Like, okay, yeah. Yeah, do you know what you are? You're an idiot who's not no longer playing Warhammer 40,000. So, you know, let me just go pack up my models here. I'm not here to be insulted. See you later, mate. Go fuck off. See ya. You know, don't need it. Don't need it. Whenever I whenever I see stress that I, I can walk away from, I do. You know, there is too much going on in the world where people say, well, you need to man up and get on with it and just face stress down. Certain times, yes, because you can't get away from it. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you just got to do something, then do it. You don't have to stand there and play 40, for one more, a, a game of toy soldiers with a dickhead. You don't have to do that. That stress you don't need in your life. So pack up your models and walk away. It's simple. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just... I can only count on one, on one hand the amount of times I've done it, but each and every single time I've done it, I've just felt happier for it. Just been like, yeah, okay. Right, well, yeah. Yeah. People will find you... People will find these people out eventually. Other people will find hobbyists like this out eventually. Don't, don't you worry. Don't you worry. And as soon as you leave that game early and, and you make you don't make a show of it, but you don't hide the fact that you're like, listen, I'm not happy with you, your attitude, or anything like that, I'm just leaving, see you later. I'm going to go play somebody else. And if they see you having fun with somebody else, that's even worse on the first person. Do you know what I mean? It's like, well, this guy's obviously okay. What the hell was your problem, you know? Anyway. <clears throat> He was playing a lot of tanks, and I managed to get a squad of Carnifexes, which included Old One Eye, close, and it was a pretty and it's pretty much game over. Highlight of that game, besides him bitching all game, was my Swarm Lord charging his Bane Blade in close quarters and destroying it. I love that. He got so mad, he slapped my Swarm Lord model off the table, breaking the swords and causing the head to fall off. I was pretty miffed, as you could imagine, but deep down I chuckled as I imagined he wanted his guardsmen to do that in the game. Long story short, he goes home in a huff, this is where it gets juicy. I get a message on Facebook from someone I've never met before, so assuming it's one of them scams, I just ignore it until I notice it's the drill sergeant's mother. Apparently, he had told her that I embarrassed him in front of the whole store and made fun of him and his models and now he was very upset and wanted to quit the hobby. None of this occurred, by the way, and Drill Sergeant is in his late 20s. Oh, Jesus, this is so fucking cringe. I explained the situation, but she was having none of it, and even resorted to using homophobic slurs and some insults that hit a little close to home, uh, like lack of a father and whatnot. I tried not to let it get to me, but I ended up reporting Drill Sergeant to the local game store. Sorry that was a long one, but I love your vids, and, and to all the gorgeous people watching, make sure to check out that glorious sponsor to make that this big this man a big youtuber he definitely deserves it thank you very much um so <laughs> that was cringe i mean that went to a next level like i thought here we go it's going to be a standard you know video of this person's a dick and, and he ruined my game of warmer 40,000. but no but no and not only was he that but he also was being an absolute prick to you and also went and told on told on you some mommy even though he's in his late 20s it's guys like this, again, I, I think I say it in most videos, it's guys like this who give our hobby a bad name. Because can you imagine, like, oh, nah, can you imagine his mom talking to one of her friends like that? Like, oh yeah, you know, Schnookums came back from his from his toy soldiers game, was very upset that one of the other children had a go at him. You know, he's in his late 20s, just, just, just piss off, dude. Piss off. Take your mother's breast out your mouth and get on with your life. Anyway, Marshall Meg says, Dear Mr. Exile, I like Mr. Please continue to use that. I love your Hobby Nightmare series, and I've been thinking about sharing one of my own for a while. All right. This is a tabletop RPG story. Okie dokie. I've not had one of them in a while. As my Warhammer experience has been overall very good. That's a good way of putting it. I like the fact that you don't have any Warhammer Nightmares. That's good. We like that. This one still lives in my nightmares despite it happening a little over five years ago and put me off any type of tabletop RPG for about four years afterwards. It is a long one, as I'm sure you can tell. One positive is that it got me back into 40k 
and that's been fantastic. On to the story. Yeah, it's not that big a it's not that big a story. It's not as big as some of the ones we've had. Anyway. My husband had a group of friends who expressed interest in wanting to play DD for some or some other similar type of game. They had never done anything like it before, but were really interested in trying it out. The group members were in their early 20s, and we were in our early 30s at the time. This is, unfortunately, rather relevant later. Being an experienced DM, he agreed to run a game for them. He asked me to play, as I have many years of experience in both tabletop gaming and live action roleplay, and I could facilitate getting them to actually roleplay and make it less awkward. Yeah, that's good. Um, always mix your table, if you can. But make sure they're trusted friends. So you, if they're more experienced, that they're trusted friends. I've done I've done games with experienced uh, gamers, like role players, and they've been very short of patience with new people, which is a bit of a shitty thing to do. But uh, you know, is what it is. Nerds be nerds. For context, I'm that player who did lots of community theatre as a kid, and now does weird accents and dresses up like their character. <laughs> okay, well that's cool. That's awesome. Um, that's great, and you know what? You find it as you go. It's fine. It's when people do this in public spaces that I've got a problem. Like, I, I was once sitting in, in my local gamer cafe, just, you know, doing some work, and everyone's sitting there playing board games and having fun, and there's a D&D &D group at the end at the end of the, the hall, or the end of the, the room, and there's this woman there, and she's just shouting in a weird elfy accent, the entire time, like, I do performing art, ha! like, all the time. And I'm just sitting there, just think, shut the fuck up. Shut your trap. You stupid woman. <laughs> just shut up. I'm trying to, I'm trying to proofread here. And I can't proofread with you fucking ah, in my ear all the time, right? But everything that your character does is amazing. Shut up. Even your, even your friends who are also nerds are embarrassed. Shut up. Anyway. This isn't going to you, by the way. I'm sure you don't do this in public spaces. You know, in your own home. in Yo, do you, man. In, in anybody's home, do you. You go and do what you want to do. If you're LARPing somewhere, do you. That's the whole point. But if you're sitting in a place that's like a public space where people are just trying to relax, you know, exclaiming about how your elf ears are really pointy is making my, my hot chocolate go down in lumps. Thank you very much, you know. Uh, anyway, I'll stop. I'll stop ranting. I'll just stop. I'll just get on with it. You know, um, traumatized. The group got together for its first session, and it went very well. Five total players. One of the players decided afterwards that this was just wasn't for them. No problem. This left us with four players, myself included. The players were a boyfriend and girlfriend, and their female friend. The campaign progressed for several months afterwards, with either weekly or bi-weekly sessions. I'm really hoping none of these people start sleeping together because this is how this always goes in these stories and it, you know, but let's see. Everybody had a really good time and I'm proud of, of how much I prodded some of them out of their shells, even getting a couple of them to have some lengthy in-character discussions. One of them even started drawing art of their character and sharing it with the group. Oh, I love stuff like that. There's nothing better for a DM when you see stuff like that. It just, it just lights a fire under you to write better sessions. We bought them their own sets of dice. It was just generally very awesome stuff. Excellent. This was always meant as an introductory and short campaign. So when it started wrapping up, everybody agreed that they wanted to start a new and longer campaign. One of the players had a friend who expressed interest in joining the game. My husband and I, my husband and I both knew the friend in question and we were quite hesitant to let him join. The group dynamic we had was the best either of us had ever experienced. And we were uh, very leery of disrupting it. Further, he just rubbed us the wrong way. The player that we yeah, had, probably Vampire the Masquerade player. <laughs> sorry, 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 getting, sorry, yes, I'm, I'm moving on. Uh, the player that wanted, there's nothing wrong with Vampire the Masquerade. I'm just gonna, just gonna take a little step back there. It's one of my favorite games. It's just that both my best and worst role-playing experiences have been playing Vampire the Masquerade. It's just most of them have been the worst ones because they, they attract cringe people who play for cringe reasons. But the people who do or are good role-players who play Vampire the Masquerade are some of the best role-players you're ever going to come across. Anyway. 
The player that just wanted him to join finally told us that if we did not let him join, she would quit. If she quit, we would lose her boyfriend and their friend who had no other transportation. Jesus Christ, alright. We sat down with the guy and talked about the game and to feel things out. He seemed genuinely interested in playing and passionate about all types of geeky pursuits, so we agreed to let him play. The first sign of trouble came with character creation. His character concept was an 11 year old girl. Oh no. We explained that the planned campaign was a horror game centered around paranormal investigation and a child character simply was not a good fit. It was also a bit creepy and weird. He pushed back hard. After some lengthy debate, he explained that being a huge fan of the Borderlands series of video games, he wanted to base his character on Tiny Tina, who is a foul-mouthed young girl character obsessed with explosions. Yet yeah, somebody should tell him that the person who voices Tiny Tina is 39, but that did, you know, never mind. Uh, this made more sense, at least. We were able to convince him to revise the concept into a teenage runaway. Okay, still a bit weird, but it's fine. The first session actually went really well. It seemed like this new group could work. New guy was pretty funny and talkative and his character was tolerable. He was a bit abrasive but nothing we couldn't handle. Well yeah, he's playing a teenager, I suppose that's alright. In the second session, things started to go horribly wrong. We had a standing house rule of no phones or tablets on the gaming table. Looking up a rule or responding to an important call or text was not an issue, but otherwise, no. It's distracting and disrespectful to your fellow players, not to mention the DM. Thank you very much. Yes, I hate that too. Kind of why I don't like playing online that much, because y you know people are just playing other games. I've seen people once when I've been playing video games, and, and I can see that the, uh, something come up. I, when I'm playing, sorry, I'm playing a, a role-playing game, and I'm DMing, and I see the Steam icon pop up that they're playing a game. I'm very tempted to say, do you know what? You've got something better to do. Fuck off and do that, because it took me hours to write this. So if you've got something better to do, piss off and do that, right? Don't let me... I've seen it I've seen it on Discord too. You think you're clever by signing off on Steam. If you're on Discord with me, I can see what games you're playing. Don't do that. It's ignorant. It's not nice. Go do something else if you want to play video games and not, not play the game that I've spent hours writing. Anyway. New player and the friend... New player and the friend who insisted on, on he join were on their phones texting or... or, or each other the entire session and giggling husband asks them a few times to stop new guy tells husband that he can't tell him what to do and that we we are being too straight laced and old-fashioned this on top of his character acting like an obstinate brat who does everything possible to derail the storyline and keep the spotlight on him as as the player Oof. the entire second half of the second session was just all the other characters trying to deal with her having what amounted to a huge tantrum it only ended when my character stated he'd had enough and was calling the police to deal with her and because she was was a runaway and an, 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 an unaccompanied minor, she would be taken into custody. DM agrees this would be the outcome, so he backs off and the plot was, was able to continue. Well, that's a good way of getting around it, but like, oh my god. I'd be trying to finish this session as professionally as possible taking that person aside and saying you're a douchebag go away um he could not make it into the session three and we had a wonderful time just like the previous campaign aside from the player that invited him making several comments about wishing he was there because it was more fun when he was is her boyfriend a fucking simp or something why don't you just say like i'd just be like oh is it important that he's here right okay well you know I mean, you know, fuck off, will you? you? You stay here. Do you know what? You and him are fucking absolute douchebags, and you act like douchebags in this game, so how about I fuck off and do something else, and you can stay here, right? And I'll see you later. You know what I mean? Like, just don't put up, don't put up with behaviour like this from your girlfriend or wife or whatever. Don't put up with it. Put her in the fucking bin and walk away. Put her in the fucking bin, and then throw the bin in the fucking sea. Anyway, her boyfriend and friend actually disagreed with her and said they preferred this session because we were able to actually play the game properly. We suggested to these two that we would be willing to pick them up if they would uh, like to continue the game as a party of three as they were the really invested players. 
They both liked the idea, but, but acknowledged it would cause too much drama in their personal lives. Session 4 was the worst. The phones were still a thing, and it quickly became clear that the new guy and friend were coordinating ways via text uh, to mess with my character because they didn't like the threat to they didn't like the threat to turn one character over to the authorities. His creepy girl character starts following my character around and calling him daddy all the time. Her character starts trying to seduce my character and getting mad when, when she's rebuffed. This is all in addition to further stonewalling the plot at every opportunity, such as deciding not to investigate strange goings on in the town, but just going to smoke weed and play DDR at a local arcade instead. About halfway through the session, the uh, new guy excused himself to go have a smoke. He was gone for an unusually long time, so I went to check on him. I found him in the kitchen eating the half of the pizza I had in the fridge for the dinner after the game. I was speechless, which is rare for me, but managed to compose myself and confront him. He says that since we did not provide him with food, he was entitled to eat some of ours. Yeah, get out my fucking house. Get out my fucking house. If this is the States, and I hope it is, that guy is getting face mushed into the fucking fridge. Because you are now in my house and you're not welcome and you're stealing stuff from my house. I am in the right to beat the shit out of you because you're on my property. Now get out. Like, the, 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 like you, I can't do it over here because we live in the UK and we have stupid laws. But this is the US and somebody takes something that's not theirs. Even if they consume something that's not theirs. You've come into my house and you're eating my food. You're stealing my shit. Fuck off. Go away. Anyway, we usually provided snacks, but couldn't afford to feed a group that week due to some expenses, and I'd inform them beforehand and welcome them to bring their own snacks if they wanted. We ended the session early. Afterwards, my husband broke down and explained he could just not deal with the stress of running the game anymore with New Guy and was going to call the whole campaign off. We contacted New Guy, explained, and he apologised profusely and agreed to change his behaviour. Neither of us believed him, but we agreed to give him a final chance because we wanted, uh, because we had put so much effort into planning the game. World building, NPCs, plot, even making items and documents for characters to find related to the plot. And there were so many fond memories of the first campaign. I warned my husband that if he stepped out of line again, it was going to be the final straw because I'd had enough on, on my reserves on patience are uh, far smaller than his. He also ate my pizza. You do not eat my pizza. Dude, if you weren't married to this guy, I'd fucking marry you. <laughs> like, he's, you're a fucking diamond. Anyway, let's move on. Season 5 opens, with the members of the party being trapped in a burning, haunted building. A helpful spirit shows up uh, to help them escape at the last minute. New Guy's character decides that she, is, she doesn't want to, to go along with this because... She hasn't been given a good enough reason, quote unquote, to trust his to trust this spirit. Okay. He pulls the old "I'm not being a jerk, I'm just role playing" argument. Husband explains that if his character just stays in the burning building, she will die, and that in reality the building would have collapsed several minutes earlier. He then accuses husband of railroading and being an awful DM. <laughs> I'm looking forward to reading this next paragraph. Patience gone. I demand to know why he feels the need to do this constantly. He replies that if my husband was a good DM, he would actually he could actually tell an interesting story, then he wouldn't. He then suggested we do something else, like play card games or video games. I stand up, slam my notebook and character sheets down on a table, and tell him to get the fuck out of my house. And that he is clearly only here to troll and was never interested in actually playing anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, catharsis hooray he starts apologizing and promising to change and to even roll a new character who is less problematic i tell him no we're done get out brilliant yes this is what these people do especially bullies this is what they do right have you ever noticed a bully when you give them back especially if they're a member of your own family and you can't physically hurt them when you give them back they say, wow, I was only kidding. Wow, why'd you have to go there? Why'd you have to like say stuff? Why'd you have to be nasty? It's like, dude, you've been, you've, been tw you've been a twat to me for two hours now. And the minute I give any of it back to you, you start whinging. It's, really? Is that where we are? That's exactly what this guy does. That's exactly what he's doing. I, it, I hate it. It's one of the, one of the, one of the really worst um, 
behaviours that bullies do is the whinging when they get caught. I, just, I can't stand it. He then tells me that he will report me to the police for providing alcohol to those below the legal drinking age. What is he doing? I frequently provided some beers or other bottled drinks at the game. Now I find, find out that only myself, husband and new guy are over the age of 21. Insert arguments and or co commentary about US drinking age here as needed. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit silly that you can join the military and kill somebody but not drink alcohol. But moving on, moving on. I was later able to verify this was indeed true. As they had all broken our trust, we kicked the entire group out. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Ultimately, we decided, uh, we, we ended up having to block all of them from every form of contact. Phone, social media, text, etc. I had to delete a couple of social media accounts as new guy was so devoted to trolling me for a while that he would make fake accounts just to continue doing so. We lost the best game we'd ever run and what had become almost our entire fan group. Recently, we have started to dip our toes back into the waters by starting a game of Warhammer Wrath and Glory to expand on our ongoing Crusade game, and that's been going great. For what it's worth, my oh, from what it's worth, my husband ran into one of the members of the group a few months ago. This was one of the only two really good players. She told him that she really enjoyed the game before New Guy joined, and that she felt bad about the whole thing, and always wanted to apologise to us. It turns out that the one who insisted he was allowed to join later uh, abandoned her boy her boyfriend and their very young child to run off with him. Aha! Zinger! I told you! I told you! I... Fuck! I've not read this... I've read... Oh my god, I fucking told you! I, I love it when I'm right. When you ever you... Sorry, I'm going to compose myself. I'm going to compose myself. I fucking knew that was coming. I just fist pumping the air like a bitch. I fucking knew that was coming. Right, so... It turns out the one who insisted that new guy be allowed to join later abandoned her boyfriend, who was also at that session, and their very young child to run off with new guy. Surprise a fucking prize, eh? Surprise a fucking prize. Toxic bitches, toxic. What a fucking surprise. Like, <clears throat> if you ever, ever sense behaviour like that from your significant other, I'm talking to the guys mainly, but counts for the girls as well. If you ever ever get a whiff of that behavior from, from somebody that you love fuck them off the red flag is there for a reason look at it examine it confront it and if they don't have a good answer fuck them off no second chances i don't care whether you're married to them whether you've been with them for 10 20 years if someone is flirting with somebody else or is overly attached to somebody else in what you deem to be probably a romantic way, get them in the bin. You deserve more than that. Right? And don't hit me with this, what, well, they're just a very naturally flirty person. No, they're not, dude. No, they're not. They're a naturally very promiscuous person. That's different. Doesn't mean they're a whore, just means they're naturally, you know, very promiscuous in terms of flirting and shit like that. Doesn't matter. Get out of my life. I deserve better than that. Fuck off. You're either interested in me or you're not. If you're interested in somebody else, then go. Go be with them. Go be with them. Bye. Bye-bye. Off you go. I fucking knew that was coming. I, the joy of being right is gone. I'm, I'm pissed now. I fucking knew that was coming. And, I, and if the boyfriend in the story is listening to this... You deserve what you got. You should have slung... And I don't mean you deserve to be cheated on. I don't mean that. I mean, I meant you deserve the hurt. Because maybe now you'll learn. Maybe now you will learn. As soon as somebody acts this way, in the bin. Gone. Bye. You want to be with him? Go fuck yourself. Go. Don't need you in my life. Right? I bet some of you thought I was being really harsh before when I was selling him to Dumper. Just for, just for being, just for texting this other guy at the table. Just for texting this other guy at the table. I bet a few of you thought I was being very harsh there. Well, there you go. Vindication. Thanks for listening and being the distant virtual hobby friend I listen to while I paint. No problem, Meg. Um, if you and your husband want to play a, a role-playing game over the summer and you're okay adapting to a, a UK time zone, I'll welcome you into a game with me anytime. Because that, that was a really good story. And uh, you guys seem like really good role players. So hit me up. Email me. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Because I've got two campaigns going on this summer. 
Um, still not sure what they are yet, but I'm fairly sure none of them, none of them are going to be fantasy based. But anyway, so let me just have a little drink of water. That was a long one. So Bolt is back, ladies and gentlemen. Bolt has returned. And he says, The day I knew I would not last in Games Workshop. <laughs> Alright, so if, you, if those of you who don't know, Bolt used to be a Games Workshop employee in Denmark. And he, he's messaged in a few times with Hobby Nightmares, which are really cool. So, hello, Mr. Exile. Hello. More Mr. Exile, please. I like it. Before I go into this GW horror story, I would like to address your brilliant joke about me having a talk show. The idea is fantastic, but the Emperor granted me a face for radio and a voice for print, and that my character generation, my charisma, and was dumped for strength, dex, and con. Alright, no problem. This story was about 1.5 years into my service as Imperial Indentured Servant in Plastic Work Camp, Copenhagen. <laughs> It was stock check day. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. You all right? I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, that was mine too. That was mine too. When I was running my own store, stock check I didn't mind because um, one thing our, our uh, manager did do is he did the stock check on his own, which I thought was really cool because it's such a pain in the ass to do. Um, but when I had my own store, I hated doing the stock check. It took all day. All day. And the system was so fucking stupid as well. Oh my god. It would miss things that you'd put in. You'd, like, you'd type things in and it wouldn't count them for some reason. It would just not count them. It just didn't work very well. Unless so you'd have to do the entire check again. It was so fucking awful. Anyway. Oh. It was stock check day. And as you might know, it's shit. Yes, I did, I do. My manager had been complaining for a week and trying to fix up the holes he made in the stock by doing favours for special customers. Ooh. Naughty. And, and this day... He had to spend in the basement counting our stock room. That left little old me with a busy storeroom, uh, incoming mail orders, and a cause, and of course, counting the storeroom. Normally, a Monday is rather quiet, so I buckled down with my coffee and just let him do. To, I left him to grumble away in the basement. This Monday exploded in my fucking face, and I started with a school class from the far a part of Denmark coming in and spending their pocket money. So that was in my intro KPI done for that week. Excellent. All in all, I had almost 60 customers that day, selling around £1,400. Some time vampires, as GW calls some of their fans, it's shit. Yep, they do. So if you go into the store and you're just there to just talk and not actually buy any anything from the store, they do call you time vampires. Um, just is what it is. Two annoyances happened that day. First, two great Kai's. I had been browsing for weeks, finally popped into the pop their Age of Sigmar cherries and bought a small army with battle tomes and a main rulebook each. No core game because Nighthorns and Stormcast just didn't do it for them. No biggie for me, but woe and behold my manager had gotten up from the basement and chewed me up for not reaching my weekly KPI for core games and that could mean and what that could mean for my employment. Ah uh, So so here's a thing, I'm gonna lower the volume a little bit here because I really wanted to say this. Um on your guys' recommendation, I've been watching uh, Pancreas No Work, and he is a really good YouTuber, but he released a video a while ago, which um, uh, I commented on because it had a very similar similar lazy um, thumbnail to mine. Uh, just the Games Workshop logo, basically. And he was talking about how good Games Workshop are to their employees uh, when compared to other retail work and things like that, which couldn't be further from the truth. Um in America, which is, I think that's where he's from. In America, yes, Games Workshop employees tend to be treated quite well. And Games Workshop managers tend to be treated quite well as well. Because they're so far away from the epicenter of everything that pretty much the company don't give a shit about them. Just make sure that you're making money, you're bringing more people into the hobby, we're happy, good on you, no worries. In Europe, however, and UK is worse, but in Europe, you get some real pieces of work that are like this, where you have great staff members in the store and it doesn't matter how good you are, if how dare you not sell 20 core games per week? How dare you only sell 19? Okay, yes, you sold 50 start collecting boxes, but that doesn't matter, because that doesn't register on the KPI. So if you don't hit 20 next week, we're going to fucking fire you. There are so many managers like that working the Games Workshop, I don't even have time to list them all. Right? So Games Workshop, 
is not a good place to work. But if it, but it, but if, if you find that one in five manager who's cool, and you're not paying rent, it's an amazing job. Right, moving on. I shrugged and said, Stormcast and ghosts aren't just aren't everyone everybody's jam. I was so dumb done with the day at this point, having been on my feet for six hours with no break, and at this point Joan, my favourite customer, comes in. I knew she was not looking for more plastic at the moment. She was in for some paint for her daughters of Cain and for a chat. There is a story about Joan when I have her permission, I will write it out, no problem. Store got busy and I had to juggle six set of people, six sets of people, and still talking a bit to Joan because she was my break that day. This was where manager did the annoying thing number two. One guy came in and in my rush, I did not give him all the attention I wanted, so he ended up getting the things he needed and leaving with no real conversation. It's a break uh, of Games Workshop rules because I did not hump the cash out of him, but I was really dead tired and so I'm busy, so who cares? Yep, I got this all the time. And this is something that um, I was terrified of whenever I was being watched by somebody from head office, which was quite a lot because they always like to come in and have a look at you. They just sit there and watch you do your job. And you, when you're in the UK, they come in, they sit there and they watch you do your job. And they make notes in a notebook. Like, do, do you know how nasty that is? Somebody comes into your job, sits in the corner of the room with a Games Workshop t-shirt on, with a notepad, and writes things down whilst looking at you. With like a smug look on their face. Do you know how shitty that is? Yeah, it's pretty shitty. Anyway, I, I just... I hate it. I really don't like it. And do you know what? Do you know what? I... That you can't be everywhere at once. Especially if you're in a one-man store. I was grilled all the time for missing customers. You know, because I was quite good at f being able to gauge by somebody's uh, body language and where the way they were looking around the store when they actually wanted to buy models. And so I would go over there and maximise that sale and then move on to the next person, right? And I knew when somebody was coming in who was either a quote-unquote time vampire and just wanted to hide from the rain in a cool store, or whether they were just there for a pot of paint, you know what I mean? If, if you're there for a pot of paint, I don't want to upsell you because you're just there for a pot of paint, dude. Leave him alone. Leave him alone, right? Anyway, but who cares? The manager cared. He had been standing out of sight counting the seconds I spent not talking to this man. Note that he could have stepped in and taken some of the heat off of me, as he technically worked in the same store, but like Russ and the Horus Heresy, he chose to be useless, as usual, and let me handle the rush. Oh, his wrath came down on me and the store when the store was empty, talking about how long I, I was about getting to the man, and talking about me wasting time on Joan, and again reminding me about the week's KPI. He was so disappointed in me, and I could not do anything else but just put on my rogue or dawn face and take it. Did the stock check with him and looked forward to the next day where he would be off because of how taxing the stock check was on him. I knew then and there that I would not last in GW, but I ended up staying for, for two more years. Yeah, that's what working there does, because sometimes you have good days, and those good days keep you around. But yeah, oh my god. It's shit like that that makes me realise that I'm, I'm, be I'm better off out of there. There have been a few times where I've been like, oh, do you know what, I wouldn't mind doing that again, and I'm just like, no, 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 no thank you, right? Anyway, moving on. Uh, Yurina says, that's a lovely name. Uh, Yurina says, yo. No, Mr. Exile. Okay, right. I'm not going to take it personally. First of all, I love your channel and I look forward to the nightmares three times a week. No problem. I'm glad I can do them three times a week. I thought I'd message with a different take from a gay woman. Well, mostly gay. <laughs> I think you've said in the past that you've never known a true lesbian. And I think that's true. I'm honestly of the mind that almost all women are bisexual on some level, some more than some more than others like me. For the right guy though, ellipses. Anyway, yeah, I do think that. I, I think that um, I think women have something that men don't, and, that, and that's like most of them, even the ones who profess at being you know straighty, straighty, straight, um, have all been uh, are all a little bit bi, on some level. They're just like very spiritual beings like that. You know what I mean? This is why when I say women love us for more than looks, that's what I'm getting at. They, they see like another level of shit 
you know, that, that we don't tend to see. Um, so yeah, I think most women are bi on some level. It might be 1%, which means you're incredibly straight. But for that one woman, or that one weird dream that you had about Gwen Stefani, or whatever you're talking about, you know what I mean? <clears throat> yes, that did actually happen. My next girlfriend did tell me that, right? She was like really, really, really straight. Like totally straight, loved dudes. Like just like, you know. Um, but like... She said, yeah, yeah, I'm properly straight, but I did have that one weird... I do fancy Gwen Stefani because I had one weird dream about her when I was 17. It's like, okay, see? That's, you know... I honestly think that they're all by on some level. Anyway. Um, I wanted to get some advice on how to find someone in the hobby. I know you've talked about this when it comes to guys, but what the hell does a girl do to get chicks? They are so rare around the hobby... And it would mean a lot to me to find someone who does not look at 40k as that weird thing I do, quote unquote. I am being totally serious when I say the attitude some ladies have toward some ladies have towards the hobby has turned me off of some great relationships. Okay. I would like to say too that being gay really gives you an appreciation of how easy women have it compared to men. Oh. Dudes hit on me all the time. But I've been single for three years and been on two dates in that time, such as the scarcity of women who are actually up for dating. So you're not alone, guys. Go get them. Aw, what a champ. That's it. What the hell do I do to find women in the hobby? Am I on to a lost cause? Should I just settle for someone who's not in the hobby? There's a nice game there is a nice gaming bar I go to that does an LGBT night. Maybe that's something to do. Cheers, Yarina. Okay. Um, all right, so um, clearly, number one, clearly you're a bro uh, because you've got a good head on your shoulders and you can think outside the box and you have actually a lot of empathy for other people. So I'm very glad that somebody is able to do that. Um, also, I think you're on you're onto a lost cause, dude, because you never know. It could happen. Um, but what I do think is that Think about all the men in the hobby who write in who can't find someone, who can't find a woman. I'm going to go out on a limb and say most women in the hobby are straight, or at least bi, but mostly straight. So if their chances are 1 in 10, yours are going to be 1 in 100, because now we're looking for bi women who would actually prefer to date a woman. Not kiss a woman, not fool around with a woman, date a woman. Those are two completely different things, right? I'm sure most women, if they've met the right woman, would, would like, go home with one and have sex with one. Like, you know. But, you know, getting into a full-time relationship and actually loving somebody is an all different ball game. So, I think maybe you're onto a loss if you're just narrowing your field of view that much. I'm not one of these people who says, go get him king or queen or whatever. And, and feel, I'm not the kind of person who fills your head with shit. Um... Firstly, I would like to know who you are for setting such narrow parameters on who is good for you and who isn't. That may sound harsh, but what I mean by that is, I get a lot of people sometimes telling me, you know, I need top quality women. You know, I need I need a woman who's at least a nine. And I look at look at these dudes and I'm like, dude, what are you bringing to the table? Why do you deserve a nine? You know, <laughs> like. What are you bringing to the table? And these are guys who are facing a 1 in 10 chance. I think you're facing a 1 in 100 chance, dude. I'm not going to lie. Um, not because of how you look or how you sound, because you sound like an absolute diamond of a person, but um, in terms of your chances, just being your chances, just repeat the people who are there available for you to go and try and woo and go out with. I would start broadening those horizons. I think that's the only way you're going to be able to find somebody that you're happy with. I'm going to be honest with you, too. The hobby is a place of uh, bastards and broken things. So the chances of you finding a well-adjusted young woman who's going to want to spend the rest of her life with you, that goes from a 1 in 100 chance to a 1 in 1,000 chance if you're looking at you know the, the normal people in the hobby. So I would, I would really, if you want to be happy, I want to start broadening those horizons. And if you can get a woman who is happy and celebratory of your stupid geeky hobby that you've got on the side 
that's somebody that you really do not want to let go of. That's somebody that you want to invest your time in. That's somebody who you want to perhaps introduce to the hobby in, in other ways. Have them do a kill team game. Have them do a dark heresy campaign. Have them, you know, there are other ways and means of going about getting somebody into the hobby rather than just narrowing your, your worldview down and saying, if they're not like this, then I'm not interested. So I think, I think you're a really cool person and you're sabotaging yourself with your attitude towards, you know, I need a woman in the hobby or I don't want one, you know. I understand what you're, um, what you're saying is that, you know, the attitude of some women towards the hobby puts you off. Then don't date those women. There are others out there who, who are right up your alley. So that's what I would do. Um, yes, the LGBT night is a very good way of doing it. That's a very good way of going out and meeting somebody. So you've answered your own question there. But be wary that, you know, this is a hobby of broken people. You, know, you are going to come across certain people who are quite toxic or who are a bit weird who don't have the mental maturity to take on a full-time relationship that's not that's not a fault of theirs it's just they're not at that stage in life yet so just be very careful about the way you go on that level but what i would do is try and meet women by going to lgbt nights um joining groups of that type making sure that you're putting yourself out there and that your people know who you are what you're into and what you do essentially right um that's what i would do Broaden your horizons, man. That, that's the best what I would do, definitely. Broaden your horizons and don't just look at the hobby. Look at the people who can add to your life. You're never going to get that one person. Put it this way. I've had people in my life who've been into all the same things as me. And the relationship hasn't worked out. And it had nothing to do with us being into the same shit. You know? In fact, that kept the dead relationship going on a lot longer than it should have. Than it should have. Because we were into the same stuff. Those relationships should have ended a lot earlier to give me time to heal, you know, so it, so it doesn't always work out for the best. Sometimes opposites do attract. The amount of dudes I know who are married to women who put up with their hobby, that's hilarious. That's such a cute dynamic. The fact that there are dudes out there who love these toy soldiers and the wife is there just rolling her eyes like for fuck's sake. Come on, Dave. Yes, yes, yes. You put it in the bag. Yes, we can buy it. Okay. You know, that's really cute. It's great when, you, when you've got somebody who's into the hobby as well, you know, but at the same time, it's not the be all and end all. It really isn't, you know. Find somebody who's good for you and move on. Anyway, I've rambled for long enough. We're nearly at an hour now, so thank you very, very, very much for watching. Um, that is the end of Hobby Nightmares for Wednesday. Please send more in for Friday because uh, I have uh, several more and then I'm out. So please send me some in for Friday. That'd be pretty cool. Or Monday. If you want to support me, head over to Composite Games, give them some love. The promo code is in the description down below, where you can get 5% off at checkout by using the promo code Northern Exile. You already get 20% off anyway, so you could end up with 25% off. Thank you very, very, very much for watching. I love you a long time. Speak to you soon. Have a good one.